Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are talking about Steam Audio, specifically because Steam Audio was just fully open sourced by Valve Software. So first a bit of an overcap of what exactly Steam Audio is, and basically you can think of this as a 3D sound API. This is for making uh, sounds that participate with a 3D interactive world, uh, kind of more immersive. On top of that, it is an entire ecosystem. You have things like Unity, Unreal, and FMOD plugins available as well. Now, one thing you're going to notice right away is this is for PC and mobile. So I think that might be one of the big limitations of this, guys. It's not necessarily a console solution, and that might be holding it back from adoption. But there are several hundred games that have used this, as we will look at in just a second. So what exactly does it provide? Well, it provides better audio integration than a HRTF. If you're wondering what the hell an HRTF is, that stands for Head Related Transfer Function. It's a mathematical equation for basically checking out how a head would hear audio. So it uses fully featured spatial audio tuned to the physical attributes of your in-game geometry combined accurate occlusion, reflection, reverb, and HRTF effects for natural sounding immersion. It simplifies the spatial audio design, so it's easy to implement and deploy for all major audio engines. This is where the game engine plugins would come in because you need to define uh, audio properties of objects in your 3D world for this to actually work. Uh, game engines and platforms tweak high-level parameters to optimize immersion and performance quickly and easily, and full control over spatial effects from uh, fully automatic physical sound simulation to unique handcrafted tuning between and everything in between. So why would you use this? It delivers a full-featured audio solution that integrates environment and listener simulations. HRTF significantly improves immersion in VR. Uh, Physics-based sound propagation completes oral immersion by consistently recreating how sounds interact with their virtual environments. And we have this excellent quote, with Steam Audio, sound appears to flow and wrap its way around mazes and corridors accurately and adapts to changes in geometry and materials on the fly. It's pretty great. This is coming from em Emily Ridaway, who is a totally unbiased Valve employee. Uh, on top of that, so we got features, occlusions and reflection, real-time sound propagations. It works with virtual reality and Biasonic support. Performance is good. 3D audio is there. Baked, baked propagation. Again, you have those integrations in popular middleware, such as FMOD and Unreal and Unity Gaming engines and support. Uh, so the big thing here is, let's look at their update section. The last update news piece here is from 2018. Okay, but if we head on over to the Steam Community Hub, we will find out more. By the way, if you want to go ahead and download this, you can click the download links and you will find there is a Unity plugin, an Unreal Engine plugin, an FMOD Studio plugin, as well as a C API. So if you want to implement this into your own custom engine or you want to integrate it into another engine such as, say, Godot or O3DE or something like that, you can do so. And of course, it is an open source project. So back to today's announcements that Steam is now, uh, Steam Audio is now open source. Uh, so excited to announce that the release of Steam Audio, the complete source code of the Steam Audio SDK is now available as open source. Uh, with this release, our goal is to provide more control to developers, which will lead to better experiences for users and hopefully valuable contributions back to the wider community of developers using Steam Audio. Um, receiving a lot of valued feedback and contributions from the community to the plugins that are already available as open source, such as Unity, Unreal, and FMOD. And we want to bring those same benefits to the core SDK. This will allow developers to tailor SDK to their needs and deliver improved experiences to everyone using the technology. And they will continue their ongoing work on Steam Audio, including the release of bugs and new features. Uh, so choice of features they work on is often driven by the needs of internal projects. For example, during the development of Half-Life Alex, we spend a lot of time working on our hybrid reverb and pathing features, which we later uh, released as part of Steam Audio 4.0.0. Oh, uh, these priorities might not always align with our prior, our partner priorities, so we want to remove that roadblock. And do, 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 do. so here we are. Uh, that prevents partners from implementing spatial audio features that require access to the core Steam Audio SDK. As an example, uh, we may be working on performance issues in Steam Audio affecting an internal project, but a partner may need Steam Audio ported to a console platform. Again, goes back to one of the glaring missing features of this is it's not, say, on Xbox or PlayStation. Uh, making the entire SDK available as open source allows partners to manage the port themselves and optimize it to their needs while also allowing them to contribute their changes back if desired. Uh, so the entire audio code base, including the SDKs and all plugins, is now released under the the Apache 2.0 license. Uh, Apache is a very liberal license in terms of what it allows you to do. Uh, this allows users to use Steam Audio in commercial projects and to modify and redistribute it under their own licensing terms without having to include source code. We welcome contributions from developers who uh, fix bugs or add features to Steam Audio. For more details, see license.md and con contributing.md in the GitHub repository. On top of that, there were some other features in the 4.5.2 release uh, fixes. 
releases mostly. Uh, nothing too magical there. The big deal about this particular release is this line right here. This is the first open source release of the Steam Audio SDK source code. So again, if you want to go ahead and check this out, it is up on GitHub, as mentioned earlier under uh, earlier on. Uh, it is under the Apache 2.0 license, which is uh, pretty, again, permissive in what it allows you to do. Uh, anytime you want to learn more, by the way, you can come in here and drill down on the license like so. You will find the core is available here. Uh, this is a C project. I think we have, a, yeah, so 93.8% of this is C++, and 3.5% is C, and 1.5% is C Sharp. So this is pretty much a C++ project, if you were curious. Uh, it is broken into the three categories. So you have the core, which is the um, the API or the SDK itself, and then you also have the implementation. So the uh, FMOD plugin, the Unity plugin, the Unreal Engine plugin are all here as well. So if you're wondering where the C Sharp code came from, almost guaranteed that it was here in the Unity plugin section. So uh, the whole fat, the entire project has been implemented as open source under the Apache 2.0 license. Now, if you're wondering to yourself, okay, who exactly uses Steam Audio? Well, the number one answer is definitely Steam. Uh, so you're going to look through this game list and you're going to notice some games that just generally aren't on consoles that much and definitely a lot of games from the Steam ecosystem or VR games. Uh, so uh, you see here the number one is the uh, VR powered Half-Life Alex. It uh, sounds like a lot of the uh, VR stuff was specifically created for this game. On top of that, you have Portal Revolution in here. You got uh, Phasmophobia. Uh, then you got things like Boneworks, another VR title. Same with Pavlov VR, another obviously VR titles. Um, so you're seeing a lot of VR-related things in here as well. But you can notice Counter-Strike 2 is in here uh, using it. And then a ton of other games. A lot of these are going to be PC-only titles or VR-only titles. So again, it kind of comes back that that whole... Um, um, missing piece of console support seems to be a big deal. Although some of these titles, I think, from Steam have had console releases. So I'm kind of curious uh, if they have their own internal port of it that works on consoles. But I'd be curious to see now that this is out there, and I'm just going to basically randomly scroll through. We're getting into a lot of games I've never actually heard of. And as you'll notice, there are uh, seven pages of them. So I believe it's 600, yeah, 608 total titles are using this particular thing. But once you start getting to the bottom end stuff, it's not necessarily... Uh, real stuff anymore, but uh, definitely being used again, very PC and VR centric in its implementation. And I do think some of that will come back down to um, again, that the lack of console uh, implementation and the fact that it is now fully open source and companies can potentially add that and integrate it back in does make it more enticing. Also, I could see um, someone doing, I almost guarantee someone is going to make a um, implementation of this for the Godot game engine uh, and probably O3DE. O3DE could actually really use it because its own internal sound engine, uh, they were using exclusively FMOD. And I know they're trying to move away from that to something that is more open source. So this would make a lot of sense for someone like O3DE, O3DE to implement as an example. But that is it, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, the uh, Steam audio is now open source. Um, gonna be interesting to see if this leads to like wider adoption and better implementation or if this is Valve just washing their hands of it. I don't think it is. I, I'm actually almost surprised that this wasn't already an open source project, but let me know what you think of this announcement. That's it. I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.